let the peace, love, and blessings of Jehovah God and His Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The work of the Holy Spirit. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of truth, leader Olumba, Olumba, Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Luke chapter 14, verses 13 to 14. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Second lesson, Galatians chapter 2 verses 9 to 10. And when James, Cephas, and John, who seemed to be pillars, perceived the grace that was given unto me, they gave to me and Barnabas the right hands of fellowship that we should go unto the heathen and they unto the circumcision only they would that we should remember the poor the same which i also was forward to do golden text james chapter 1 verses 26 to 27 if any man among you seem to be religious and beleth not his tongue and bridled not his tongue but deceiveth his own heart this man's religion is vain pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspoiled unspotted from the world expectations of the full time workers beloved are you now aware of what is called the work of god why do you struggle for posts and position, why do you struggle for the post of a Christ servant, of a Christ student, of a worker or a missionary, a child of God, a prophet of God? What I want to tell you is that in any work you do, it is not the pastors that will reward you for the services rendered. Neither is it the apostles nor the bishops. It is only God that rewards you according to your deeds. This is the instruction that you have to abide with. Therefore, the advice now given to you forms the general instruction that all those who intend to render services unto the Father should abide by. Many people remark that there is nothing one can do to them, thereby disregarding other churches, but you are now enjoined thus. But when thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee, for thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. This is our task. We are expected to go and spread this gospel and help others who need help. It is as a result of this unlimited love of God that the Holy Spirit came and He has neither beginning nor end. He has come with peace, with joy, with love, righteousness and patience. This is the work of the kingdom. You are expected to follow after his footsteps. You are not expected to go out and do that which you know is wrong. Do not boast that you are a man of God, that you have erected a mansion for God, or have done 
any other thing. The time for such bragging has long passed. Now is the time of the Holy Spirit. You are expected to go out and disseminate this gospel. Teach others, help them, give a relief to the distress, offer to the orphans and the widows. Give to the needy, be generous and kind to the poor, and let everyone be comfortable in life. If the world had known that God is in existence, the government would have given a support to the poor and needy. But since the Spirit of God does not direct them, they do not care for the orphans, the widows, the blind, and others less fortunate. This should have been the most important work embarked upon by the governments which is most acceptable to God. Today, the reverse is the case. No one think of the blind, the needy, and the lame. As a millionaire, you think that you are only for your, you think that you think and care only for yourself. Is this not the problem facing the entire world? No. Man is very much ready to drive in flashy cars, eat and enjoy costly materials without thinking about the poor. This knowledge has been given to you so that you may know the right thing you should do. Give to the poor just as it is stated in the scripture for it provides your salvation a spiritual chorus says oh child oh child weep and mourn no more for the helper and the savior is not in any other place but in our midst. Right now, the needy, the poor, the widows, the orphans are all in their places. What do the rich people and the entire world think about their situation? In what way have they put in their efforts to revitalize the destitute? This is why I make it clear to you that brotherhood is incomparable. This kingdom cannot be compared with anything. Many people have heard about the Holy Spirit but do not know what it is all about. The Holy Spirit is love. It comes with peace, with joy, power, truthfulness, divine pieces of advice and directives. He has come to arrange things in their normal position. If you should consider the words of our Lord Jesus Christ as recorded in Matthew chapter 20 verse 28 which says, Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. You will then know exactly what the Word of God entails and what the Holy Spirit has come to do. The work of God has no affiliation with your material desires, such as eating, drinking, putting on shoes and costly materials, enjoying and driving in flashy cars. These have nothing to do with the work of God. Rather, those things lead due to eternal condemnation. His work is not to minister unto himself, but unto the entire world. Hence, when the children of God sing the song, Who is this that comes from Edom with died garments from Basra? Heaven and earth are often filled with sorrow. Read Isaiah chapter 63. Here is Isaiah chapter 2. Here is Isaiah chapter 63. This is what it says. 
Who is this that cometh from Edom with thy garments from Basra? This that is glorious in his apparel. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness mighty to save. Wherefore art thou red in thine apparel and thy garments like him that treaded in the wine in the wine fat? I have trodden the wine press alone, and of the people there was none with me, for I will tread them in mine anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. And I will stain all my raiment, for the day of vengeance is in my heart, and the year of my redeemed is come. And I looked, and there was none to help, and I wondered that there was none to uphold. Therefore my own arm brought salvation unto me, and my fury is upheld, and my fury it upheld me, and I will tread down the people in my anger, and make them drink in my fury, and I will bring down their strength to the earth. I will mention the loving kindness of the Lord and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord which bestowed on us and the great goodness to all the house of Israel which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness for he said surely they are my people children that will not lie so he was their savior in all their affliction he was afflicted and the angel of his presence saved them in his love and in his pity he redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old but they rebelled and they vexed his holy spirit therefore he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them then he remembered the days of old moses and his people saying where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his flock? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him that led, that led them by the right hand of Moses with his glorious arm, dividing the water before them to make himself an everlasting name? that led them through the deep as an horse in the wilderness that they should not stumble as a beast goeth down into the valley the spirit of the lord caused him to rest so didst thou lead thy people to make thyself a glorious name look down from heaven and behold from the habitation of thy holiness and of thy glory. Where is thy zeal and thy strength? The sounding of thy bowels and of thy mercies towards me, are they restrained? Doubtless thou art our father, Though Abram be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not, Thou, O Lord, art our Father, 
our Redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. O Lord, why hast thou made us to err from thy ways and hardened our heart from thy fear? Return for thy servant's sake, the tribes of thine inheritance, the people of thy holiness have possessed it but a little while. Our adversaries have trodden down thy sanctuary. We are, we are thine. Thou never bearest rule over them. They were not called by, their, by thy name. Tell me, anyone that has the knowledge of giving relief to the distress? It is often said that when all hope has gone, the Savior appears. Without our Lord Jesus Christ, as well as the Holy Spirit in this era, who had come to the entire mankind, how could salvation have come to us? Now, is there any medicine in the hospital? In what way can you obtain your salvation? Then, what do you think about the situation in the entire world? Is this not the duty which you have been assigned? Now, the doctor himself is sick. The nurses in the hospitals are all sick. And indeed, every other person are sick. Who is he that will render a helpful service to each other? As a child of God, what do you think about the situation? What are your individual ideas and opinions? And as a Christ servant, what do you think concerning the situation? A local adage has it that once a fight is fierce for a chimpanzee, he, it invites a gorilla for help. You should realize that the hope of the entire world lies on the children of God. Does it mean that there is no child of God who can come to their rescue? Or there is none who can come to the assistance or aid of this set of people? An English adage has it that charity begins at home. Inside our home about sickness, suffering, and famine. Yet you wake up one day, put on your garment, and travel to America on ministry work. Is this what you are asked to do? What about the sick people in your house? I am here to inform you about what is expected of Christ's servant. The children of God and all those who are here for the service of God, whether you are a little child or a woman or a man, the task is for us to help the poor, the needy, the blind and all those that are afflicted in one way or the other. What is the good thing that can be found around you? Why can you not go and help the needy? Do you not know that this is the work meant for the children of God? The Holy Spirit has come with all authority and power to rule the entire world and the true children of God are to express the same love to others. You were not called to play. You are here to give a helping hand to the needy with the power of the Holy Spirit in you. This explains the statement of our Lord Jesus Christ in John chapter 17 verse 19. It says, And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Now, we all have seen various wars and have heard the rumors of war in the world. 
Where shall our salvation come from if we do not sanctify ourselves for the Holy Spirit to work through us? Who shall work for us? All those who are will all those who are weak recalcitrant to the law and the words of God are of the flesh. The entire world, the governments, the secret societies and the native doctors are of the flesh. They are led and directed by the flesh. They are all blind, lame, deaf, and are, and are already in complete perdition. Right now, the Father, as well as the Holy Spirit, has come to redeem and save them because they do not know their stance. Sanctify yourself. Blood and flesh cannot do this work. Take, for instance, the whites are introducing many discoveries from their carnal knowledge of science and technology. Behold, all these things amount to nothing and they are all in vain. This is why you are warned to kill the flesh for the Holy Spirit because the flesh is a lifeless thing which is of no importance. Let us therefore sanctify ourselves, refrain from all the vices and follow after God. By sanctifying ourselves unto them, He will then use us to accomplish His work.